This is a slideshow made from pictures taken when I planed the rail of my planer. The first few photographs are fillers to let the narrative catch up. The rail was worn and I needed to refurbish it. Planing makes the job much easier, but I knew of no other planers around in reasonable shape. I had recently refurbished a small planer for my son as a birthday present. While working on it, it occurred to me to use its rail in place of my larger rail so that the planer could plane its own rail. That is what I did. The original rail was removed. The rail was then inspected to see what needed to be done. It was quite worn on the lowermost surface, below the dovetail. That meant that as the head traversed the rail, its tool point, being forward of the rail, would drop as the head tilted into this depression on the front of the rail. An auxiliary table was clamped to the columns to replace the rail. It was a milling machine table that I had previously machined off the dovetails. The smaller planer's rail was clamped to the auxiliary table. There would be no power feeds and so I would need to turn the handles at each stroke. Setup included leveling and positioning the rail so that despite its small size it might be able to perform all the tasks without repositioning. As it turned out, I could not reach everything and I needed to move this rail a couple of times. The rail needed to be aligned. Here, the setup is complete. It was time to thoroughly inspect the rail and to plan the job. Because of its wear, the flat under the dovetail was the place to begin. After the first pass, an indicator is used to check how deep the next pass should be to clean the surface. The head was set to match the angle of the dovetail. The dovetail was then cut to clean. The rail's top surface was already very straight and so I removed less than two thousandths. Finally, the two flats were cut to clean and into the same plane. Here, all available surfaces have been cut and it was time to stand the rail up in order to do the small remaining backside surface. This completes the planing of the rail. Scraping began with the dovetail. The first pass was done without using a straight edge. This shot is after the first inking and scraping. These shots are of a very thin inking after several passes with the scraper. The surface is now ready to begin the finished scraping that will be visible. The head had no oiling system to speak of and so after using a shaper to machine the head to fit the rail, I drilled some oil holes and made some oil grooves on the in interior surfaces. This required the addition of three oil cups. The head was scraped to fit the rail. Allowances were made for the difference in the shaft and the screw and the machine was reassembled. After leveling the rail, the table was planed. Here is a video taken recently showing that the rail is still straight. The straight edge being used is not the same as the one used to scrape the rail. You can see that about half the error is because the straight edge is not level, or rather that the rail is not parallel to the table. I got a similar error when I indicated the table. Let's try another straight edge. Here it is again using a different one. As you can see, this one is not quite as straight as the first. Incidentally, this was my first straight edge. I made it from a South Bend lathe 45 years ago in order to scrape the top of this rail. You can still see the original planer tool marks through the scraped surface. At the time, I did not realize how important the rail's lower face was to accuracy. After watching this video, I realized that I should scrape the straight edge flat again. Interestingly, at the end of the second test, after the head is stopped, you can see the needle creep 50 millionths. I wonder if that is the now stationary head settling down as the oil oozes out from the ways. Now for a bit of history. The planer was made by the G.A. Gray Company in about 1905. I purchased it in 1973 and converted it to a hydraulic motor drive. In about 1996, I removed the rack and the bull gear and replaced them with a hydraulic cylinder. At about the same time, I installed a digital readout. 